Thank you, Professor Spence. Can I, too, um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, but also make the point that it was the Aboriginal people of Northern Australia uh, tens of thousands of years ago who started trade into our region, uh, well before white men uh, set foot upon these shores. Can I acknowledge, of course, the Chancellor of uh, Sydney University, as well as the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Kerry Brown, the Lord Mayor, uh, and, of course, uh, my good friend, the Consul General. But can I acknowledge you all as friends, in particular, my old friend, William Chu, who, uh, William, you honour us by your presence here today. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today because, as we've heard, this is the third occasion when this forum has taken place. And as if we've learned anything from our interaction with Asia generally, but China in particular, is that it's ongoing relationships that count. It's not just turning up the first time, it's continuing to engage. And that's what I like about uh, Sydney University, what I like about the China Studies uh, uh, um, Centre, is that it is continuous, it is active, it is genuine, and it is determined to grow benefits on both sides uh, of our countries. Can I um, firstly pay tribute to Sydney University, our oldest and most reputable university, for its ongoing work uh, in so many areas, not just through the centre, but in so many of its faculties, uh, some of which uh, are on show outside, um, and knowing that ultimately if the goal is to grow trade and investment so that we provide the people of China and of Australia and of the provinces and states of both with greater opportunities and better living standards, it's important that uh, we unlock that great potential that exists within our universities as we set about that task. Um, today's forum uh, is important for all of those reasons. It's important too, as has been mentioned, that we have an alignment, which doesn't always happen, of local, state and federal government, supporting an initiative, supporting engagement uh, within our region and importantly supporting engagement uh, with China. Uh, the great news is that it's a matter of bipartisanship so despite a change of federal government, we see the same renewed desire to grow that relationship. And I want to acknowledge that uh, the Prime Minister has indicated that he would like to lead a mega delegation to China next year, that it, mega in the sense that it's not just going to be led by the Prime Minister, but he'd like the state premiers and the territory chief ministers to accompany him. And I've put up my hand not because I necessarily want another overseas trip, but because I think it will be a useful way to again be noticed, to again open doors, and to, a, to, a, to a, again exploit the opportunities that exist for both of our countries uh, through such a trade mission. Today, of course, is about sustainability. Today is about sustainability across a number of areas, uh, whether it's energy, whether it's transport, whether it's water, or whether it is agriculture. And we know that there is much that we can learn from each other. We know that there is many opportunities in both of our nations, and in particular in New South Wales, that can be exploited for the public good, not just in this country, but also in China. There is much that we can teach and exploit positively back into China in the water and agricultural areas. But equally, there is much that we can learn about transport. And I'm delighted, and I would have to say this, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm delighted that my transport minister is determined to uh, grow light rail as a positive contribution to this city's uh, transport network, as well as building uh, heavier rail. And whenever I go to China, whenever I see the enormous growth of rail in China, whether fast rail, whether underground rail, or whether traditional rail, you know, there is much that we can learn. And I'm delighted that some of those Chinese companies are out here tendering and wanting to get involved uh, with our rail projects. I know from a report issued by KPMG and the China Study Centre last year, updated earlier this year, that one of the benefits that New South Wales has is we're not simply uh, a state where the major relationship with China or indeed other parts of Asia is about resources. We have a far broader spread of investment opportunities and contacts between us and China than any other state. So, for instance, as we were reminded in that March update, uh, more investment in relation to renewable energy uh, out of China into New South Wales uh, than any other state. And we're determined to grow that. 
We're determined to grow that because for as long as Europeans have set foot upon these shores, and that's 226 years come January, this city, this state and this country uh, has grown off the back of offshore investment. At no stage have we ever had enough capital onshore in order to develop our businesses, to exploit our resources and to grow our economy, to maintain and, and improve the living standards that we expect and enjoy and to provide those opportunities and jobs that our citizens want. And yes, from time to time, there is debate around uh, what might be described as inbound direct investment. Uh, early on, it was debate about uh, British investment. Having spent a lot of my youth in Darwin, uh, Lord Vesty, who owned at one stage, I think, half of the Northern Territory, was not exactly a pin-up boy in certain areas. Uh, then investment spread principally to North America. Then, of course, we saw Japanese investment. And today, we see increasing investment from China. And at each stage of the way, there has been some controversy. But the point is that each stage of the way has also seen greater prosperity and greater economic development in this country. And ultimately, that is understood. So as a state premier, I'll continue to argue for uh, a con a growth in trade and investment uh, from China, operating within the Foreign Investment Review Board guidelines, because I know that is good uh, for our citizens. Now, the great news, as we were reminded earlier this year, is that outbound direct investment from China uh, to Australia from, two, from 2005 until last year was greater than any other country. And I think there are so many more opportunities that exist in this country. So with the cultural breakdown that Clover Moore has described, with the financial centre that Sydney is, not just in Australia, but hopefully in the region, with the development of Barangaroo, which is an incredibly sustainable development, with our strengths in water, in agriculture, in transport and in energy, there is much, I think, that we can offer to growing and deepening the relationship uh, we have uh, with, uh, with China. And that's why today is important. Uh, we meet uh, in a wonderful building, a building that uh, from memory was first constructed in 1889, a, a building that reflected the optimism, enthusiasm, but importantly, the commercial reality of the day. This is a building that was built on strong economic growth. If we're going to continue that strong economic growth for both of our peoples, these forums are important. I congratulate Sydney University, I congratulate the China Study Centre, and I wish you all well in your deliberations.